Hi, God bless you. This is your brother Ferdinand and uh, we are still looking at winning over worry. It's cold uh, where I am in Maryland in the U.S. Uh, bringing this edition of Truth and Brief to you and we are still looking at winning over worry. You see, you we are not made to worry. You are too precious to live a life of ceaseless tension. All the time you are on the brink of exploding, of confusion, you're palpitating, your heart is beating fast, you don't know what is going to happen. That is not the way your Heavenly Father ordained for you to live. The reason is because your Father is bigger than what you are worried about. You know, there's something I've settled with life, and that is the fact that there is nothing that can arise in life that my father cannot handle. <laughs> there is nothing. And that's why we are still looking a bit at some of the roots of worry. And one of those roots is ignorance. Remember last time we saw that worry is coming out of our limitedness. Because we are limited and there are all kinds of things coming at us, the tendency is to be worried. If you are unlimited in resources, and in power and ability and in knowledge. You will not need to worry because whatever comes, you are ready. And for us as believers, we are not unlimited, but we have an unlimited father. Our heavenly father is unlimited in his care, in his compassion, in his presence, in his power, in his ability. Do you know that God is already inside the tomorrow and the next week that you are worried about? But apart from unlimitedness, our ignorance is another major cause of worry. Remember I said to you that Matthew chapter 6 is a good point from where to study the matter of worry and how to walk in victory. Matthew 6, 25 said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than the food? And the body more than the clothing. Now look, listen to verse 26. He said, look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Now listen to the question. Are you not of more value than they? Are you not of more value than they? In other words, ignorance of your value to your heavenly father will set you a worrying completely unnecessary he said are you not one version said one scripture said you are what more than a whole flock of sparrows do you know that you are too costly to be forgotten by the heavenly father look you cost him the blood of jesus i think it would be very bad business for god to use the blood of jesus to buy me and then allow hunger to kill me. It doesn't make sense. It's bad business. I mean, why, why pay? You should have allowed me to die in the first place. What is completely unnecessary in the light of your value to your Heavenly Father? Ignorance of your value. Ignorance of things. Do you know you can be worried about things you are that if you knew a bit more, you will not be worried. There are lots of people who are terrified about flying and they sit in that place and they are shaking and they are panting and they are just palpitating and worried until the plane lands. If you understand flying a bit, much of that is unnecessary. Planes don't just drop down from the sky like that. Huh? Of course, there are times of turbulence. I mean, I have been in you know, that kind of situation. The turbulence was so bad and we were genuinely worried. In fact, I thought, was this the end of the matter? But, you know, the Lord brought us through it. But generally, the point I'm making is that there are certain things you are worried about them because you are ignorant of them. We fear things that we don't know. That's why when you are worried about something, one of the things to do is to research it, gain understanding. And in find, getting understanding, like Colin Powell, the former U.S. Uh, Secretary of Defense said, Chairman Joint Chief of Staff rather, said, he said, nothing is ever as bad as it seems at first. He said, nothing is ever as bad as it seems at first. So worry can be rooted in ignorance, in forgetfulness. When you forget 
the faithfulness. You forget the interventions you have experienced. I mean, you've gone through all kinds of things and your father was present and he brought you through. What is rooted in lack of contentment? When you are comparing yourself with that person and you are comparing yourself with the Joneses or with somebody else, I don't have this, they have that, I don't have that, then you start getting worried unnecessarily. All of this is completely unnecessary for us as God's children. Meddling, dabbling in things that don't concern you can bring worry. When you start, the psalmist said, I don't engage myself in things too wonderful for me. There are things I'm not in charge of. Do you know that I'm not the president of my country? I am not the CEO of so so and so company. I should not be worried about those things. I can pray about them. I can offer suggestions. But why should I overwhelm myself? A lot of people are overwhelmed simply because they are engaging things that don't concern them. (laughs) Somebody said, for peace of mind, resign as the general manager of the universe. (laughs) It says, if you want peace of mind, you should resign as the general manager of the universe. So all of these things precipitate worry. Do you know that worry can come from laziness? When you don't do what you are supposed to do, when you are supposed to do it, imagine a student who doesn't read at the proper time. Now exams have come. She's worried. He's terrified. I hope I don't fail. Where were you when others were studying? So taking preemptive, proactive measures, all of those things will help you to win this war on worry. But I want to particularly emphasize the ignorance. When you don't have a revelation of who you are in Christ, and you don't have clarity about who Christ is to you and who you are to him. You don't have understanding about the fact that Jesus lives in you. You are carrying him inside. You are a beneficiary of the indwelling. God loved you so much that he came to live inside your heart. What greater guarantee for the future can you have than that? Father, in the name of Jesus, take away the veil from our eyes. Show us our preciousness to you, O God, that we may rest forever lord on the value that you have placed in us and celebrate your grace that will care so much for us that you will give your very lives for us in jesus name amen i pray that you will grow in your understanding of god's love for you you are precious other people may not value you but don't undervalue yourself jesus paid with his blood to purchase you that's the highest price that could be paid in the universe He should be able to look after what he bought. (laughs) I said, Jesus Christ should be able to look after what he purchased. Blessed be his name forevermore. Bye-bye.